open uh, the conference. Uh, again, uh, we obviously we wanted to be here in person. We appreciate uh, you participating in this manner, though. Uh, we know that the interactions in person are so much more important uh, uh, when we are in person that uh, we get a lot of value out of it. But we're going to do this way, and we're hoping that in this new format and over three days, there's an opportunity for many, many more people to attend and to join the conference and get the benefits out of the conference and the panelists and the speakers. We have a great lineup of speakers and panelists and appreciate, uh, again, your attendance here today. Um, this past year has really definitely shone a light on the need for strong leadership and strong leadership that OGCA members uh, definitely provide to the industry. Um, over the year, we saw that um, you know, OGCA members were very, very key in getting the first messages out to the industry and how to deal with COVID and how to deal with the pandemic. And as a system partner, worked with uh, ourselves at IHSA, worked with the ministry to get those first information packages out by the end of March. And that was phenomenal given the shutdown within the first couple of weeks of March. So we want to, I want to commend the entire industry for helping everyone in Ontario get moving as the construction um, uh, the documents were the first ones out overall. It was a very great time of uncertainty. We saw big changes as things moved forward. And again, with the leadership and the collaboration, we saw that really tremendously ramp up. And again, appreciation for your leadership in doing so. The other thing that uh, I think we can take uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, really importance out of is the fact that the industry really moved forward quickly in implementing greater hygiene and health and cleanup facilities, collaboration and scheduling of activities to keep people separate, keep, keep, keep people safe. Also dissemination of information, very important to get people to understand what's going on and how it's going on so we can relieve some of those uh, anxieties that came with the pandemic and make sure that everyone works safely. So again, commend you all for doing so. Um, today's is again, a today's event uh, over the three days, today more importantly is about recognition. And we want to, you know, look at that very carefully today, and and take that uh, that that recognition very uh, proudly because of the uh, the nature of this past year, and really the nature of the leadership within OGCA to be recognized means you're at a very high level, which is fantastic. Um, the other three that we again we the other two days, March 12th and March 19th, we encourage you to keep moving forward and participate in this as we have very good uh, speakers also. A quick thank you to the conference organizers as well, David, to you and your staff and uh, Giovanni's staff in getting us together. Uh, we know that, again, uh, this is something everyone looks forward to, and we appreciate all the speakers and panelists who are going to be participating with us here as well. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, get a lot out of this and, um, and take it not only today, but take it forward into the workplace for, for health and safety prevention. So I'll pass it on to David now. And again, thanks and uh, hopefully have a great day today. David? Hey, Enzo, thank you very much for those comments and uh, uh, kudos to IHSA. IHSA is a great partner. This is the, I don't know, eighth or ninth year we partnered with IHSA on this conference. And, you know, it's not just this conference, it's uh, especially over the last year, it's been an incredible partnership. Uh, never have the needs of the industry be greater in health and safety. And IHS there has been there to support the industry and what's really been a success story considering everything we've been up against. So thank you, Enzo. Thank you. Part of our uh, commitment, as you know, to keep workplace safety at the top of mind is we usually start our meetings with a safety moment. So I'm just gonna take a second here to pause, ask if anybody, well, on our panel anyways, uh, has a safety moment they'd like to share with the group before we move on. David. I see Craig LeSurf. <laughs> yeah, well, I have one. Um, you know, as you talked about it, it's important safety is a priority for everyone um, and keeping our ourselves, our loved ones safe is important. And part of that is making sure that we come to work every day fit for duty. Um, you're gonna see this over the next while. Um, we wanna make sure nobody is impaired um, and that doesn't mean drugs, just alcohol. It means a lot of things. It can be complacency. It can be a lot of different things. So you're gonna see over the next little while, a focus from uh, a lot of health and safety professionals and from industry um, on fit for duty, which really is four states. It's a mental state of mental health, state of physical health, emotional health, and competency. You have to have all of those in order to be fit for duty. Um, you're gonna see it over the next little while. And you know we're gonna use a slogan tagline called, 
be present, be focused, be safe. Thank you. Thanks, Craig, some, some great, great thoughts there. So as Enzo mentioned, the conference is going to be presented to you over three continuous Fridays. Next Friday, we'll feature an industry panel discussing leadership during a crisis. And we now have a lot of experience on that one. Uh, in two weeks, we'll discuss building an effective strategy to manage workers' safety. So please make sure you're registered for both of those conferences. They'll be very worthwhile. Today, Recognition Day, will feature remarks from leaders about workplace safety, the League of Champions recognition of their new champions, and of course, the presentation of the Doug Chalmers Safety Award. This conference focuses on successful safety outcomes that start with leadership. Our industry's continuous improvement over many years began with company owners and CEOs leading change focused on safer workplaces. In this conference, the leaders and health and safety professionals come together to refocus on this goal and learn from others. By being part of this, you're signaling your commitment. So thank you for doing that. I would also like to recognize our lead sponsor, 4S. 4S is an outstanding provider of safety services and we are very fortunate that they are supporting our conference as the lead sponsor. I'd like to, I'd like to call on Sobi Raganathan of 4S to join us and introduce Minister Monty McNaughton. Sobi. Thank you, David. Um, it's a great pleasure to introduce our Honorable Minister Monty McNaughton, Minister of Labor, Training and Skills Development and MPP for Lambton, Kent and Middlesex. Monty grew up in Southwestern Ontario. While growing up, he worked in his family's small business, the local home hardware. At the age of 20, um, he, he was elected as a municipal councillor in his hometown of Newbury and was re-elected for two further terms. Monty was first elected to the legislature in 2011, where he continued his advocacy for his local community. In June 2018, he, were, he became the Minister of Infrastructure, where he opened historic streams of infrastructure funding expanding natural gas supply into rural Ontario and cable, a plan to bring high-speed internet to underserved communities across the province. In June, 2019, Mr. McNaughton was appointed as the Minister of Labor. He immediately set upon a provincial listening tour, meeting with more than 150 labor leaders in less than four months. He quickly established workers' safety as a top priority while also shepherding in WSIB's rate reduction, freezing nonprofit rate increases and introducing a new program that will reward Ontario's safest employers. In October, 2019, his portfolio was expanded to include training and skills development. Mr. Marty has been a tremendous support for the construction industry during this pandemic time. It is my great pleasure in welcoming him for this Leadership Day conference. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's welcome you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sobi. Good morning, uh, everyone. It's great to see so many familiar uh, faces. Unfortunately, I don't have my uh, League of Champions jersey on, as, as you can tell. I know Craig, uh, I'm surprised he wasn't sending me notes asking me why, why not. Um, I, I'm actually at Queen's Park. I've got an announcement at, at 9 o'clock that um, it is really going to help a lot of uh, the, the folks that are on this call today. Uh, it's an announcement to encourage uh, employers to bring on apprentices and really excited about this. Uh, I think today's announcement is going to be a real game changer uh, to encourage uh, businesses to step up to bring on uh, more apprentices and, and fill that skilled trades uh, shortage that we have. So we'll ensure that uh, our office uh, reaches out to all of you as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm delighted to address the many health and safety leaders uh, in construction here this morning and uh, truly uh, everyone on this call have uh, done heroic work, uh, including our Chief Prevention Officer Ron Koleski, who I know will be uh, speaking uh, shortly. Ron and I seem to be doing uh, these virtual calls uh, at least once a day, so it's good to see you again, Ron. You're, I'm not going to make any hair jokes uh, uh, this morning because <laughs> mine's getting uh, long, uh, clearly. 
Uh, I want to thank everyone at the uh, OGCA and IHSA for putting this conference together, as well as 4S Consulting Services. I know, Soby, I was on a call uh, with you and your team uh, not that long ago, but just thank you everyone for your dedication to health and safety. Uh, this past year, uh, I don't have to say this, but it's been a, a year like no other, a very tough year for uh, everyone everywhere in not only Ontario, but across Canada and around the world. You have faced uh, truly unprecedented challenges. And I know many of you are small business owners making this an even uh, greater challenge, but I want you to know that uh, Premier Ford and our government uh, truly recognizes the important work that all of you do. You build uh, key projects like hospitals, schools, factories, stores, uh, all of these things that form the basis of our everyday lives. And you truly are the backbone of Ontario's uh, infrastructure. And I think most importantly uh, to me, you provide meaningful jobs uh, to about a half a million construction workers, including uh, 65,000 women. These are jobs that uh, families all over Ontario depend on. And that's why it's so important to me that we continue working together to keep construction sites safely open. To be clear, nothing is more important to me than the health and safety of uh, people. This includes the thousands uh, who work on job sites every single day. Your workers all deserve to come home safe and sound at the end of a hard day's work. To this end, construction has been allocated 40,000 rapid tests per week to help screen workers. We've also developed materials to help contractors and other employers develop workplace safety plans. Since last March, we've conducted more than 20,000 COVID-related inspections of construction sites. And on Wednesday, I announced that 100 additional inspectors we hired have begun uh, their training and they'll be on uh, uh, job sites and in other workplaces in, in the weeks ahead. With these uh, new hires, we are creating the largest inspectorate in Ontario history. Our inspectors are making sure precautions are in place, like screening all workers and visitors at sites and ensuring people are wearing masks and wearing them properly. They also ensure workplaces have a safety plan in place. We found that overwhelmingly, most employers are doing a great job in ensuring health and safety measures are followed on their sites, but our inspectors are identifying where improvement is needed. Where possible, they're providing education and support, but make no mistake where necessary, where a business doesn't take safety seriously, we won't hesitate to issue uh, fines and tickets uh, or shut a job site down if necessary. In January, I launched a three month stay safe all day campaign. During this campaign, uh, inspectors are focusing on making sure precautions are followed throughout the day, including uh, break times. Too often we see people stay safe on the clock only to endanger themselves and others by crowding together during you know, lunch breaks or coffee breaks or in uh, break rooms. So it's absolutely vital that we stay safe uh, at all times until we get through this pandemic. We're also taking a customer service approach to workplace health and safety. Owners of small businesses, as we all know uh, on this call, don't have large uh, HR divisions to roll out new safety protocols or deep pockets to make up for short shortfalls they might have experienced. That's why our latest uh, small business support campaign includes initial education visits and then follow-ups to those that require additional help. This campaign also has a free webinars on how to operate your business safely and a new 30-minute free e-learning program. Lastly, we have developed uh, a dedicated small business phone line with staff at our call center available to answer any health and safety questions that uh, small businesses may have. And this campaign is really focused on those small businesses that have 25 or fewer employees, just to really let them know that we're here and to help them. Uh, I want everyone to know that I'm uh, truly proud of how construction has stepped up uh, during COVID-19. Uh, your leadership and work with uh, our government has kept sites uh, safe during these difficult times. Our numbers show that thanks to all of these efforts, um, there have been extremely few cases of COVID-19 uh, in construction. And I especially want to thank the uh, Ontario General Contractors Association, uh, IHSA, and League of Champions for their tremendous support. I know Enzo mentioned uh, the very first 
uh, guideline that we posted was for the construction uh, sector. And um, it was because everyone uh, worked together to make that happen. So thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, last year, I announced a $75,000 funding agreement with the OGCA for the League of Champions program. This funding is helping its members continue to have the best health and safety performance in the industry. This is more important than ever, obviously, in the face of, of this pandemic. Today, you are coming together at this conference to bring uh, insights, tactics, and best practices. I wanna thank you for your participation and commitment to this vision. Events like this make a real difference on your job sites, and it's not only your workers who benefit. Safer workplaces mean families, friends, and communities are better protected against COVID-19. Good leadership that keeps our workers uh, safe needs to be recognized. And today you'll present the Douglas Chalmers Award for Safety. This award will be given to a very deserving recipient for significant contributions to advancing health and safety in construction. So I wanna say a congratulations in advance, the work uh, you do matters. And our government is also proud to recognize those who play an important role in workplace health and safety. We are close to recognizing our first recipients of supporting Ontario Safe Employers Program. Really excited uh, about this. This voluntary initiative recognizes employers who have met high standards in safety. It is run by our chief prevention officer who uh, you're going to hear from uh, in a few moments. But promoting health and safety in the workplace, as everyone knows, helps reduce injuries and illness. I encourage you to learn how you can strengthen your safety system. Recognized employers are, all, are also eligible for premium rebates from uh, the WSIB. Improving safety isn't just the right thing to do, it's uh, good for the bottom line. As leaders, you have the knowledge and procedures in place to prevent the spread of this virus. Your leadership helps ensure these resources and tools are used in the best way. So I wanna wish everyone a productive event today. Uh, and also a reminder that my door is always open uh, to helping. I'm a, a big uh, supporter of the construction industry. I love the work you do and uh, always here for you. So thanks for doing this today and thanks for having me and we'll talk to everyone soon. Thanks very much, Monty. It's, uh, it's been a, an honor to have you join us on so many of these events. It's, uh, it's, it's great the collaboration we've had to have, we've had with, between our association and, and you and your office this past year, especially. So we look forward to uh, continuing and building on our relationship and helping each other through all this, through all the health and safety challenges we have uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And I'm really excited to hear about your announcement. So uh, thanks again for joining us. Now I'd like to call on uh, Ron Koloski. I'll do a little intro for him. For the past three years, Ron Koloski has been Ontario's Chief Prevention Officer and has been with the MOL for three years. Prior to this appointment, Mr. Koloski was President and CEO of Public Services Health and Safety Association. PSHSA is responsible for providing health and safety services and advice to over 10,000 firms and 1.7 million workers across Ontario's public, broader public, not-for-profit and private sectors in, in health and community care, education and culture, municipal and provincial government, public safety and emergency services and First Nations communities. Mr. Koleski has been with the Canadian Red Cross as Director General and the National Executive Lead for Health Programs. Ron will give us a short update. I think he can do that. And uh, please put any questions you have along the way in the Q&A section and we'll get to them during the Q&A. Thanks very much. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, okay, can everybody hear me? Thank you. Um, thank you, Joel. Um, yeah, today's, um, today's anniversary day. It's, it's kind of the first anniversary of my receipt of the prestigious Doug Chalmers Award. It's my third anniversary as chief prevention officer, and it's actually my, better not forget this, 44th anniversary of being married. So this is a, a day of anniversaries. So here I am, and I too apologize for not having my uh, League of Champions jersey. It's, uh, it's in my office. Um, you know, I don't want to sound whiny, but by the time I get done work and then get in the car and go downtown, the building's closed. So I couldn't get in there. And then being the CPO, we're in a red zone, uh, Toronto's in lockdown, so it wouldn't really 
be kind of good to uh, to go down there to get my jersey. But behind me in spirit, um, that was a gathering we had probably before, just before the lockdown occurred um, last year. Um, anyway, I, uh, you know, I, I just reflecting on uh, the surprise I had last year, the Doug Chalmers Award, and all the work that we had done up to that point in time as a as an industry and as a system uh, was really important. Um, you know, we we put together some things that have only had been dreamt about, um, you know, for the past decade, and a lot of it was you know, instigated by construction. Um, I, I would say the core program, the minister had indicated we are about to announce um, our first three recipients of the, the SOCI recognition, the Supporting Ontario Safe Employers Program. But collectively, what we did is a collaborative effort between the WSIB, between the construction industry, specifically OGCA and IHSA, uh, to be able to come up with an integrated program that would optimize the opportunity, not only for small constructors to um, receive core certification, but also it's almost like a double major when you graduate from university that you get core 2020, you're also recognized and you have the ability to take advantage of, of rebates from the WSIB all the way through. So this whole concept of incentivizing people to do well and recognizing when they do do well I think is a, a, a real milestone and a feather in the cap of, of our collective approach to system. Um, I, I would like to acknowledge just a, a few people. So be in 4S Construction, clearly um, uh, you are a leader in this industry and it is always a pleasure to work with you as is Enzo, a, a system partner. And of course, Giovanni and, and the OGCA and uh, uh, and everybody that's attending this conference. This, this like, you know, the other thing I wanna mention is it is my third year and, you know, every, every day is a new day and it's not that uh, it's become boring. I mean, certainly this past year has hardly been boring, but there's still so much to do and so much opportunity. And I think we're only scratching the surface uh, on that. And if, if you know, on reflection of receiving the Doug Chalmers Award, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's a prestigious group of people that that um, have been awarded this this uh, this recognition. And I would have to say, after this last year, the whole industry, you know, if we could, uh, would deserve the, you know, Cecil D. DeMille Historical uh, Doug Chalmers Award if if possible because everybody pulled together on that and and i think that we should never forget that going forward of what is the art of the possible when it comes to um, something as major as covid but if we translate what we've been able to accomplish into our day-to-day -day efforts to manage our health and safety i think zero is now more a possibility than than ever before um, you know, there's there's so many things that have happened. I, I think I, the the minister has really characterized the the opportunities that exist, the incentives and initiatives that the government announced that are all safety focused, focused towards uh, construction opportunities um, through the expansion of the trades. So there's there's a lot to be um, a lot to be proud of and, and a lot of opportunity going forward. I would also like to say that you know uh, this past couple of years has been um, really important from from a prevention uh, uh, division or office point of view. We are um, pending the launch of a strategic plan that will be engaging in a lot of new opportunity in terms of our our focus on on prevention, our focus on a public health model, our focus on outcomes, and really understanding why things happen. We have a very uh, robust and rejuvenated prevention council that's starting to get into um, a number of, of really um, uh, significant issues that are going to help us move forward with our prevention strategy and it too is working closely um, with our section 21 committees. I think the construction industry as a whole has taken a leadership 
in inclusion, diversity, and anti-racism, which you can all be proud of because of, uh, of the significance of that um, as a social issue. And also the sensitivities of mental health in construction, which we know, you know, as, uh, as Craig had mentioned in safety moment, you know, there are many things associated with, uh, with um, being fit for duty and addressing mental health issues is, is a key area in that area. So I applaud the industry and what it's, uh, what it's doing. But I think the most important thing, um, and, and I just have a couple of things just so people don't characterize me as being babbling on. Um, the one thing that I'm most proud of is that, that we are starting and to work as a system. We are working as a system, not only in the construction industry, but we are working with WSIB. We are working with our, our health and safety partners. We are working with our broader health and safety partners, such as 4S and, uh, and the 235 uh, training providers that, uh, that, uh, that we support through uh, the mandatory program. And that too is going to expand as we move uh, Regulation 1101 from the WSIB uh, to under the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act, that being first aid, which we will gather uh, even more providers uh, um, within the auspices of our um, Chief Prevention Office. And that'll give us the ability to start working on unique programs, um, such as understanding you know, occupational injury as opposed to system or sector injury. We, we have done some studies that identify that certain occupations um, tend to have greater injuries than others. And we're going to really focus on those. Um, I know last year, uh, 2020 was not the year that we expected in terms of, of uh, fatalities and critical injuries. Uh, we were um, six more than the prior year, 22 fatalities um, in 2020, um, seven of which was falls. Uh, the only bright spot, I guess, out of a, a tragic situation is that falls continue to decline with the industry's support of the uh, Working at Heights uh, program. But if we look at the long ball, and the long ball is LTIs in general, LTIs um, over the past decade have gone from 1.42 to 1.14 in construction. And it's likely that it will fall even further when we look at um, reductions, um, uh, uh, LTI reductions for 2020, even though it was a, a, a challenging year with fatalities and critical injuries. But most importantly, and I, uh, and I do wish that uh, uh, when the numbers all settled that, that David, um, uh, and Giovanni, uh, take a look at OGCA's numbers. I know looking last year, uh, OGCA as an industry, uh, as a league of champion partner, whereas the construction industry was at 1.14, OGCA members were at 2.22. So that is something to be very proud of. And, um, you know, we will continue to monitor those uh, statistics and continue to uh, dive into uh, into the reason why as we move forward. So just in closing, um, I am proud of, of being a Doug Chalmers recipient and being chosen by the OGCA. Um, and uh, I'm certainly proud of our, our this year's participant and the work that uh, he has done over time. And, uh, you know, to Giovanni, to Sam, um, Enzo, um, you know, David and, and uh, Rob and everybody on this call, Craig, um, um, appreciate your efforts. You're certainly a partner. Uh, none of this could be done without you. And I look forward to a, a, a better uh, 2021. Uh, um, thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Um, we've got uh, some questions that we said we would ask, and I've got one to field with you now. If you wanted to use your Q&A feature, um, by certainly type in a question and we'll field them. So Ron, can you tell us about the focus in your new provincial strategy to collect better and richer data to inform your decisions around the development and prevention programs and services? How will information about the root causes, oh, you can't do that to me, Elizabeth, um, of injuries be collected and used in a timely way? Well, there's a, there's a couple of things that we're doing. Um, you're right. 
uh, we depend very heavily on on WSIB data to be able to um, determine, you know, the cause of injury. We're working with the private sector and large employers to be able to um, um, work with them to to identify particular um, trends in injury. I know we're working with one large company that um, um, focuses on um, uh, custodial work. They have like thousands of custodians that they work with. And we know that custodian uh, injuries are, are high with respect to slip trips and falls. We're working with the coroner's office in gathering more detail. We're working with our inspectorate who are um, in the process of changing their um, software to be able to provide more timely and effective information. So we're starting to work with um, our partners to bring together um, a, a systems approach to data collection. The WSIB is working on what they're calling a new data lake system, which will give us easier and, and quicker access to information. And then we're going to be developing the particular tools and algorithms that we're going to look at to, uh, to be able to get that data. But that's only one side of it. Um, working with all of our system partners, our private and our, our funded system partners, um, we've been having discussions about uh, uh, our, our partners reporting on, A, the number of courses uh, uh, they're teaching by, by, the, um, by type, and we're hoping to gather the uh, information on the occupation of people that they're teaching it to. So if we have the ability to look, and I'll use my custodial example. If we know that custodial injuries uh, amount to, let's say, you know, 5% of the 72,000 uh, LTIs that occur annually, and we know how many custodians actually work in, in the province, because we're now part of the Employment Ontario group through the amalgamation of different uh, ministerial divisions into the MLTSD, we'll be able to look at the labor market numbers. And if we can associate that with the number of custodians being taught through our training providers, and if we're able to do the sort of epidemiological research on why custodians get hurt, we can then start looking at the courses and saying, are we teaching the course to the occupation and touching all the bases when it comes to covering injury? So this is really closing the loop on everything. So this is our, our plan in our five years to be to be more data focused, but but also more evidence based so that we can start achieving those outcomes that we're hoping for. Good. Uh, you know, Ron, we've got a lot of uh, things and a related question on data. You know, one of the great things you've been doing is bringing data forward in time. You know, in years past, we've always been hearing about incidents, accidents and critical injuries. And we hear about it six months after the fact statistics. Um, your office is now managing to bring that forward. Recently, you come out with some, some statistics for, uh, you know, in January for last year. Um, what's your future plans with regards to making that public for everybody so that we can learn in real time versus, you know, waiting five, six months for the data? Well, you're right, Craig. Our, our goal, you know, I used to run the ambulance service in Toronto, and uh, it's it, we used to get quarterly reports on response time. And if you get rid of a report on April 15th for the first quarter of the year, and you found out that you had a really bad January, that doesn't really help all the people that had to wait for the ambulance to get there. And we moved to a real-time, on-time performance management system so that you could tell exactly what was happening. And I recall talking to the former chair uh, or former CEO of, of the WSIB is, is that, you know, it, the, the system's very slow to pivot. Uh, by the time we get the data, uh, the problem has happened and, and, uh, and we're, we're just learning about it uh, three weeks a month later. So my ultimate goal is to be able to at least move that, you know, three month window to one month window down to one week window to be able to be able to get a handle on things to give you useful information for you to manage your workforce. I cannot manage uh, what you do. I can only provide you with the tools and resources that you can effectively manage it for you. So that is the goal to get 
a shorter lead time for us to get you information. And eventually, you know, like Compass, we should be able to and are working towards uh, open information that uh, you, you too can manage your files by getting in there and saying, okay, I want to take a look at what's happening. So I think real time is within reach. That's exciting to hear. Um, you know, when we had another related question, it was, I think Ian was, Ian Cunningham of COCA was typing it, but the WSIB collects data for the purpose of claims management. The Ministry of Labor collects information, the purpose of enforcement and prosecutions. We understand where and who, but not why. Nobody seems to collect any data to inform decisions regarding prevention, which is what we just talked about, Ron. And, you know, we talk on a regular basis uh, through the industry and I, you know, as an advocate, uh, as a business owner and an advocate for safety, you know, I'm all about why it happened and getting to the root cause. And we, we fully understand that you're connected into, you know, investigations and possible charges and all that sort of stuff. But we shouldn't let that get in the way of, of affecting um, action in our industry for um, productive um, and proactive safety measures. And, you know, are we going to be able to get some, some traction to actually get to the root cause as well as just, you know, that there was a fatality? Yeah, it, it, there, there's a few things that are happening. One is last year and the year prior, we've aggressively gone out to industry um, through the chief risk officer that uh, Sujoy Day and did a number of uh, root cause analysis. We've worked with our system partners to develop their uh, capacity to be able to continue to do that. Um, so that we're not waiting in the queue for one individual being dependent. Um, the other thing we did, and you know, to Ian's point, he's right. Uh, you know, we have enforcement data, we have claims data. So what about prevention data, the epidemiological data? So we are setting up a unit that is going to focus just on that. Um, it's going to be research focused. Uh, it ties into what I indicated previously about um, understanding you know, if we know in construction that between 35 and 45% of injuries in certain sectors, whether it's reno, reno, demo, ICI, general, or residential seems to be general laborers and, uh, and helpers, you know, we wanna be able to dig into that because, you know, uh, there's an old saying, you know, there's probably five things that cause 80% of the problem and a hundred things that cause the next 20% we need to be able to focus on those big things that are happening and start solving those as we go forward. So there will be an epidemiological focus. Um, many of you may have been on the um, call with the chief coroner. Uh, we know the chief coroner has, uh, has undertaken a reform of uh, the Coroner's Act and investigations into uh, fatalities. Um, one of the proposals that he had mentioned was to set up a technical panel for every construction fatality. And that technical panel would be a group of technical experts that would, would have to uh, meet and, and uh, report within a year, as opposed to having an inquest that occurs four years, or as in the case of, uh, of uh, the Metron inquest, uh, we're still waiting 11 years later. So. I think anything that we can do to accelerate those things are going to be important, but there will be a, 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 a real-time epidemiological focus uh, moving forward. Right, right. Um, you know, there's another question here that I'm not 100% sure on the details, but with the introduction of CORE and other safety frameworks in the industry that are being used, how do we reduce redundancy of work across frameworks? And how would we re reduce administration and bureaucracy per framework so we can focus on safety instead of so, so much time on redundant work? And, and I'm taking from that question that, you know, we've got multiple programs going on and we're having to repeat some of the administration. And so how do we cut through some of that red tape? Um, you know, my focus was let's get it launched. And, you know, and I remember uh, Clive, uh, storming in my office saying, you know, you got to recognize core and that kind of put the light on with, with Enzo and Paul Casey about, you know, we've got a CPO standard, ISO is out there, 45,001, CSA 18,001, and core and core, core 2020. 
And then we had the uh, rejuvenation of safety groups through the Health and Safety Excellence Program. Well, we really sat down and put that all on a blackboard. No, it was a whiteboard, actually. I'm aging myself, but it was a whiteboard. And we said, how can we connect these? Because CORE was facing a problem where many of its members would, would join up, but, but only for the sake of saying they joined up. They weren't completing it. There was a cost to completing it. And if they went through CORE, um, it was expensive. So we linked it to the Health and Safety Excellence Program that you can take a majority of your core credits through HSEP and get that rebate. When you graduated from core, we put core and, and made core equivalent to the CPO standard in the ISO 45001 standard and the 18001 standard so that you didn't have, if you did a core audit, that was good enough that, you know, we didn't make people have to do two audits. Now there's still a lot of administrivia that exists there, but you know, this thing's only, you know, it was launched on November 17th, 1919. Um, we really didn't get our act together from the Department of Forms and Bureaucracy until, you know, March of 2020 that led into COVID. And, you know, probably the second last thing on people's minds was, was you know, getting accredited through a COVID. So now we're at that point where we're starting to get people in the pipeline, understanding what we can do to, uh, to streamline it. There are some areas of, of uh, audit requirements that, that we're trying to align, um, 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 you know, for, for all, all facets. So we're trying to fix that. But um, collectively, I think uh, over this year, um, we can spend a little more time and, and start, excuse me, start to make this a little better. As we get along, as we get more and more into the system, it's gonna be a lot easier. But you know, we just, this, this first tranche of people that we're recognizing, we really wanna make sure that we do it right because uh, you know, there are people that uh, can be critics out there. So bear with us, we'll, um, we'll get there. Thanks, Ron. There always, there's always critics. Uh, I'd like to now call upon OGCA President uh, Giovanni Catillo to, uh, to talk next. Thank you very much, Craig. And I got to thank you, Ron. Um, you say that, you know, you ramble on. It's quite the opposite. You're always um, the purveyor of wisdom for our industry. And we want to thank you for your engagement with us. You have been steadfast in your support. And uh, I got to say at the OGCA Safety Committee, you're always a fixture and you know you're you illuminate us when it comes down to the the areas that you're focusing on and how we can help and you've reached out to us so i compliment you for being a leader in what you do and you take prevention seriously and and i don't think enough people out there they hear about you but they don't they don't know you we we have the pleasure of having known you behind the scenes and so for that we thank you immensely you're you're an asset to the industry as well as the prevention office well, thank um, you. You guys make it easy. Uh, that's 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 far too kind. I think the guys who make it easy are IHSA, and we got to thank Enzo, my longtime friend, for for uh, always being supportive and always thinking prevention and how to make things happen, uh, advancing the cause. Uh, again, without uh, IHSA, uh, you know, they they demonstrate true leadership. And I want to take a, a second before I introduce our our next speaker is. Um, to introduce uh, Joel Malo. He's the president of uh, Malo Blaney Construction. And I got to tell you, when you talk leadership, the last thing you want to do as a leader of the OGCA is assume your mantle in the midst of COVID and with a, a new president on the helm after, you know, Clive Thurston's retirement of, of 19 years. And Joel has just demonstrated his ability to lead and navigate the murky waters that has been the pandemic. And for that, uh, the OGC thanks you. I know you don't get, you're, you've been very quiet and behind the scenes and all that stuff, but I just want to highlight the fact that you are a leader in your own right and, and the OGC is, is happy to have you during these uh, most turbulent times. So thank you for that, Joel. Now I get the, uh, the uh, pleasure in, uh, of introducing somebody that actually doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. Um, Craig Lesurf is the president of Gillum Group. Uh, he's also the chair of our um, uh, OGCA Safety Committee and the chair of the LOC. And I think if I can surmise him in one word, it's passionate. Uh, Craig 
uh, lives, breathes, eats safety. He is one of the individuals that when they say, you know, they walk the walk and they talk the talk, Craig exemplifies both. And without someone like that at the helm, I don't think we could be where we are today. And for that, I want to thank Craig as the chairman of the OGCA Safety Committee and acting chair of the League of Champions and uh, uh, introduce you to Craig officially and formally at this time. Craig, it is all your show. Yeah, thanks, Giovanni. I'm blushing here. You can't quite tell because I'm wearing red, but uh, I appreciate that. So I'm here to talk about the League of Champions. As you know, I'm, I am passionate about it. Uh, the League of Champions was formed about five years ago, um, and it was done for a number of reasons. And it was because we needed to make a difference. And the difference is in safety culture and getting everybody to get buy-in. We, you know, one of the things we've got, you can see the jerseys, and for those that don't know, um, but we asked for people to sign our jerseys and, you know, you can see these jerseys here. We've got them. We have lots of signatures. Um, and the idea of collecting the signatures is that it's your family name that goes on it. And the family name typically goes on a contract. And with that, you sign your name and what you do is make a commitment. And the commitment is that you're going to work safe, that you're going to make sure everybody beside you work safe. And then everybody goes home safe at the end of the day. And it's a real simple commitment. And we ask people to get buy-in and we've done it. Um, and to that end, we've got, uh, you know, we're, we're about 90 members and patrons, and we've got uh, more coming on. We're going to announce them today. Um, we've got seven new members and four new patrons in the last year. You know, in the middle of the pandemic, everybody's still wanting to focus on safety, which is great. Um, and so I want to tell you a little bit about what the League of Champions has been doing for the last year. Um, we've had 13 webinars um, over the last while, and we've had some great response. We, you know, we used to go out and do in-person events. Those sort of got kiboshed with COVID and, and our, our need to social distance. So we said, what can we do different? How can we help? And we've done a number of different things. And we've done them on mental health leadership. We've done them on safety, how to deal with COVID. We've talked about working with IHSA. We talked about working with Ron and his team at uh, you know, both production of materials and information. So they've been very, very good over the last while. And we reached over 2,500 participants. So kind of uh, excited and proud about that one. Um, we have a new website, uh, League of Champions, please check it out. Um, we've got an increased social media presence. Uh, we've got member patron recognition engagement going on. Um, we've got, uh, uh, we're now incorporated uh, as a separate standalone entity. Uh, we have a steering committee, uh, which I chair. Uh, we've got a, got a great members on it. Um, we've established a series of bylaws. Um, and we've got, uh, most importantly, we've got Judith Rita now joining us as League of Champion coordinator. And she's been doing a great job and she's going to be out there. And if you're a member, um, then you can give Judith a call and she'll organize to come out. We'll talk about supporting you and ways to help. Um, and if not, you're not a member, call Judith anyways. Now you can become a member. So please, let's, let's make a difference. I think in 2021, our focus that we're leading is, as I mentioned earlier in the safety moment, it's about fit for duty and, and making sure that we all do it. Um, and we're going to tie it into a number of things. Uh, May is uh, known as Safety Month um, for OGCA and a number of organizations, and it also has Safety Week, which is the first week of May. And as I said earlier, that it's going to be, you know, uh, a number of different initiatives, but we're going to have the slogan, you know, um, be focused, sorry, be present, be focused, be safe. Uh, so it's very important that we, we announce that over the next little while. So with that, um, I'm going to now go into the new League of Champion members. Um, normally, we would bring them up on stage. They, we'd have jerseys and a photo op. Um, so I, unfortunately, we don't get to do that as well uh, in webinars. But what we're going to do is say all the names uh, and want to congratulate each and every one of you um, on your standing choice to become a member of the League of Champions. And I hope you do what I did in all of the companies I work in, which is use it as a lever a lever to talk about safety. It's a visual image. You can, you know, I proudly hang the jersey in our front boardroom. I have one in my office and I ask every new employee and every visitor to sign my jersey. That's why I've got tens of thousands of, of signatures. It's because I go out and, and look for people to make the commitment. So with that, I'd like to welcome uh, First Choice Disposal, Forest Consulting, Brenenko Construction Limited, Shandos, Deneen Construction Corporation, Golden Horseshoe General Contractors Association, Harbridge and Cross, McGill Construction, Ontario Inc., Modern Niagara, Ross Clare Contractors, Steel Core Construction. These are some great new additions to the League of Champion family. 
and we look forward to your involvement and in getting out to see you. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to IHSA's President um, and CEO, Enzo Garantano. Enzo. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Craig, and congratulations to all those firms for joining, and thank you for, for joining and, and, again, expressing your commitment to health and safety as, uh, as we move forward. The other piece of... Um, of the League of Champions that we're really proud of, and, and I'm sure many of you are wearing your jerseys right now and and showing uh, the C uh, on your on your jersey. And if I can just show mine here, as uh, Craig said, I'm not a good hockey player because my C is too low on my chest. But the League of Champions crest is where the C usually is on the hockey player, but ours is just below. And the C stands for Core Certification. I want to take a moment to thank again OGCA for uh, moving forward with Core with us certificate of recognition back in 2000 and paul may correct me but 2012 13 when ogca really worked with i just say in bringing core to ontario so again thanks for that and with um the certificate of recognition program as many of you know it recognizes companies that have a health and safety management system that's validated through an audit to meet the standard so the essence of core really is to drive improvements to drive continual improvement of the firm's health and safety management system and one that involves all aspects of the company, right? All your work, your entire risk profile of your company, and it engages your staff. And that's another critical part of, of, of what the league stands for. It's about getting that commitment out to everyone within your company. So when, you, when, when we talk about core and recognizing those, it's, it is a big deal. And we do want to congratulate all those that have gone forward um, in achieving core to recognize you today as well and hopefully you've received your c and you'll be applying that very proudly to your jerseys um and it's not just for presenting the c and saying you know we've, we've done something and it's one and out we know through evidence through alberta and bc studies that having core certification and being active in that makes a difference to the workers outcomes people will get home more people will be home safe every day less high risk injuries as well so again, this is something uh, to move forward with, to continue to improve, and uh, will you know join us in wearing that C proudly. So with that, I'll announce the uh, the those companies who joined the league who are also core certified, and they include Bernanko Construction, Ganine Construction, Harbridge and Cross Limited, McGill Construction Ontario, Modern Niagara. Ross Clare Contractors and Steel Core Construction. So again, congratulations on your achievement of Core, and we again welcome you to uh, to the league and wear that seat proudly. Thanks. Well, thanks very much, Enzo, and uh, once again, congratulations to all the new League of Champion members, patrons, and the Core recipients, as well as to the, all those companies that are continuing to be League of Champion members. Thank you very much. Um, I think with, together we're going to make a, a better Ontario, and uh, thank you. Uh, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Paul Casey. Um, Paul Casey is with IHSA. He's got an anniversary as well of 10 years at, at IHSA. Um, and his mandate is uh, he's been a champion for successful development implementation of strategic plan and lead employer health and safety recognition programs. Um, Paul has previously enjoyed a 20 year career with WSIB in prevention and operation divisions. And he's here to give us a brief update regarding core 20 and the change, changes happening with the core program. Paul? Thanks, Craig. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to see the number of people here today. Actually, the number just jumped up to 99. So, so Craig must have attracted a few more people to the call. Uh, but, you know, like with, with sessions like these, uh, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes. So just very quickly, I want to thank, you know, David, Elizabeth, Giovanni, and Judith for, uh, for the work and the work uh, working with IHSA and, uh, and uh, pulling this together today. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to have a chat, especially about core 2020 uh, off the top, you know, we all had challenges uh, with COVID uh, through this past year. And, uh, you know, interesting, we recently looked at our audit numbers for core. And while prior to COVID, we were looking at increases annually of 30 to 40%. Uh, this past year, we 2020 audit numbers were almost the same as 2019. So while that's not bad that we're, you know, the consistent uh, movement and, uh, and uh, accreditation of their programs, um, we recognize that it's been a challenge for some companies to uh, get 
uh, into their into the field and uh, conduct their audits. So we we did have periods where we accepted uh, delays and extended uh, the letters of good standing for a lot of companies. So to allow them to continue to bid work. Uh, Core 2020, as Ron Kluski mentioned, uh, gave uh, Ontario now the opportunity through Core. Uh, to be accredited by the Ministry of Labor, which is significant. So a recognition, and then in conjunction with WSIB to get a financial incentive to reward and compensate for the extra work that companies do to achieve that goal. Uh, I'd like to recognize the first company that uh, achieved Core 2020 with IHSA, Rabicon uh, Contractors Limited, uh, just recently got uh, achieved Core 2020. And uh, if you're not aware of what the differences are between uh, our core 2015 and core 2020, uh, we, we did align with the ministry's uh, accreditation standard. And that is broadly based on the ISO 45001 standard. Major gaps are there's four different uh, uh, elements, procurement change management, contractor management, control of documents and control of records and a requirement to have a policy and procedure for each element. So one thing, you know, in, in Enzo and I talking to our colleagues across Canada who also offer CORE, you know, I, IHSA basically went through an audit of CORE ourselves with the ministry and we found those gaps and we've implemented them into CORE. And uh, we're in the process now of talking to our colleagues across Canada about, you know, moving in that direction and, uh, and raising the bar and leveling the playing field uh, to be in line with international standards uh, to make sure that uh, we move forward. One of the greatest values of the CORE program itself is the ability for it to assist companies to plan and implement over time. So uh, what Ron mentioned earlier and what we've worked with WSIB and the, the ministry is to show how uh, elements of the health and safety excellence program and the accreditation program are directly aligned in the core program. So what we are doing, and I encourage, you know, the 99 participants on the call today, those who are registered or not registered in core, register but also register in WSIB's excellence program. And the reason for that is that as a company implements the program, they actually get a financial incentive to, to help offset some of the costs that might be associated with training or uh, buying protective equipment or auditing their workplace. And those that are core certified, I recommend that you also um, uh, register with WSIB's uh, excellence program and pursue those four gaps. And while doing that, you get reimbursed that'll help you bridge the gap. Um, you know, a long time ago, a decision was made at IHSA to, to walk the talk. And we became core certified uh, shortly after we, we launched the program and it changed the way we do business. And uh, to our employees and everybody else now, it's, it's part of the, the norm. And we are actively now working towards core 2020. And uh, there's a big focus in our organization to make sure that uh, we continue to be and demonstrate a leadership role as we move towards it. Um, I just wanted to point out as well that uh, IHSA has planned um, our spring conferences. Now in the past, we did them in person like everybody else, uh, but now coming up in April, we will be having some virtual conferences. So we have two dates planned, April 14th and April 27th. And we've been sending information out to people who are core certified, but I encourage anybody on this in this meeting to reach out. And there are, there are three major topic areas that we'll be going through during these conferences. Uh, the 14th and then repeated on the 27th, uh, hazard assessment, which is the essence of any uh, effective health and safety program, uh, statistics and records, which sometimes is a challenge, but helps to guide organizations towards targeting you know, where they need to focus their efforts and management review. One of the really neat aspects of CORE is management review because that pulls in the role of senior management to evaluate, assess, and uh, to set targets, goals, and objectives annually. And, and with that, it leads to accountability and drives outcomes. And so uh, working through that and having buy-in from all levels of an organization leads to success. Um, 
where are we going in the future? I encourage everybody to visit our website. We've got some really good tools on our website. We have a core 2020 transition tool, which helps a company who is transitioning from core 2015 to 2020, uh, identify their gaps and develop an action plan. We have a new standard uh, for core 2020, an audit tool and our handbook. And our handbook is kind of like that, you know, you wish you knew what you didn't know. Well, this handbook actually tells you what you need to know. So uh, if you are curious of what the gap is or what, what's expected in a different area, this handbook helps you walk through it. Um, you know, IHSA is very pleased and proud of the relationship we have with uh, the OGCA. We, we enjoy the opportunity to be part of the League of Champions and part of their uh, work to improve performance. And on the last note, I'm going to throw in a, you know, just my own thing. You know, the numbers that, that Ron talked about, the performance numbers, I guarantee you there has to be a catalyst to change. And, and those numbers coming down is a direct result of the work that the members of the OGCA have done towards improving safety in the workplace. And the grand outcome, the biggest outcome here is all those people that get to go home safely every day. So I wanna thank uh, the OGCA and the members of the League of Champions and uh, everybody on the call today for the opportunity to, to talk and and uh, wish everybody a safe day. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, I, I just wanna say, I think, um, uh, the remark you made earlier about the audit numbers maintaining um, sort of the, the same level in 2020 as past years, I think is actually a pretty tremendous victory. And it's a tribute to the momentum that we've carried with this, this movement that we've created so many years that even with all the hell we've all gone through this year, the, the, the attention is still there to this movement. And I think, it's, I think it's fabulous and we have to just keep it pushing and keep going. I'd like to allow you, this call on, um, on Craig. Uh, Craig's gonna introduce a little video that we're gonna play. Great, thanks, Joel. Um, I was remiss when I was giving the announcement on the winners for the, uh, the new members of the League of Champions. So when I, we'd like to play the video now, we have some imagery for you. Drum roll, Elizabeth. Hi, my name is Sobi Wagnathan. I'm the Compliance Partner at Forest Consulting Services, Forest Occupational Health and Safety. I'm also the Lead Auditor for ISO 45001 as well as Co-External Associate Auditor with IHSA. We are very happy to be part of the League of Champions. Um, their vision and Forest's mission really aligns very well together. At Forest, we work with our clients. We do have a large portfolio of construction clients. We work with our clients to embrace health and safety culture as part of the organizational culture. Thank you, League of Champions, and let's go and create more health and safety champions together. Thank you. Hello, my name is Madison Brooks. I am the health and safety manager here at Bernanco Construction. We would just like to quickly extend our thanks to the OGCA and the League of Champions for our moment to share uh, our thoughts on health and safety. We at Bernanco are course certified. Uh, we've just received our letter of good standing with the IHSA for continued uh, success in core. And we have done everything we possibly can during this pandemic and in with the past two years to improve our program and to ensure that all of our workers return home safe at the end of the day. Bernanko is, is motivated to promote health and safety among all of our sub trades, all of our clients, and we are happy to celebrate health and safety success with all of the members here in the LDCA and as well as the OGCA. Thank you for your time. So at Shandos, we decided to join the League of Champions so we could be a part of something that was bigger than what we can do on our own in terms of providing an opportunity to present a very safe culture on our job sites. At Shandos, we're very passionate about providing that opportunity for those working not only today, but in the future. So we hope that by being a part of the League of Champions, we can learn from the industry's best as well as be one of the industry's best. 
Hi, I'm Rick White with Deneen Construction Group of Companies. We are very proud to become members of the League of Champions. It's a privilege to be joining other like-minded safety groups. Uh, we also just became core certified. So again, thank you for the privilege of letting us join your crowd. On behalf of Harbage and Cross, we wish you all a safe and healthy New Year's. COVID-19 has created a lot of challenges for our community, for our industry, and for our staff. But with each challenge lies an opportunity to listen, to learn, and to use our continuous improvement process to make better the lives of our staff, our industry, and our community. We are grateful to the League of Champions for creating this network of safety professionals with like-minded goals of improving the lives of others through our health and safety initiatives. Harbage and Cross joined the League of Champions because we want to be part of Agents of Change, to learn from our peers, and to bring us safety cultural awareness to our organization. We thank you, League of Champions. Here at McGill, we've established a positive safety culture. We're committed to safety everywhere, on every site, and our inspiration has led to membership in the League of Champions. They provide us with empowerment, recognition, and support, adding to our identity and focus. Hi, I'm Elias McCool, Health, Safety, and Research Excellence Specialist with Modern Niagara. Modern Niagara is proud and grateful to be part of the League of Champions. The LOC is comprised of many contractors with a collective intelligence that pulls together their resources to shape the way the safety strategy in the industry continues today in this province. From our family to yours, we wish you all the best. Stay smart and stay safe. Hi, my name is John Sharples and this is Joey. I signed the company up for the League of Champions and I've joined many of the webinars and they've been very, very helpful. The protocols for COVID and how to deal with it on the job sites. I'd like to thank them for giving us the opportunity to get this lovely jersey and this very nice C for the core certificate. They're very helpful and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, thanks very much for allowing me to slip that back in. Uh, appreciate it. Back on with the agenda. Back to you, Joel. All right, thanks, Craig. Um, now I'd like to introduce to you uh, Doug Chalmers. Um, Doug's going to talk to you about the award name for himself, the Doug Chalmers Award. I'm pleased to welcome Doug, for whom safety, the Safety Award has been named. Doug is our former chairman of the board who championed workplace safety over 30 years ago at a time when few recognized its importance. Safety has and continues to be a strategic priority for OGCA and across the industry because of Doug's dedication. With that, I'll pass it over to Doug. Do we have Doug? I think he's dealing with a health and safety matter right now, Joel. Okay. I'm pulling up the screen now. Good morning. I am Doug Chalmers, 1990 OGCA chairman. I was determined to change the old attitude that the construction industry was risky and workers were going to be injured. This new approach reflected that in my company's experience that all injuries can be avoided by implementing a process-driven model. For over 30 years, the OGCA has had a mandate to improve safety throughout the construction industry. The result is that the industry is much safer and in fact, much safer than many other industries. In 2003, I was honored by having the safety award named after me. Our progress is the results of organizations and individuals that have made a personal commitment to work safely. And every one of you should be recognized. Thank you for making a difference. Today, we recognize one person has made a personal commitment that no family member should be faced with the loss of a loved one through workplace tragedy. Uh, 
Great. That was uh, excellent. Uh, you know, Doug, Doug was passionate about Save. He still is passionate. He still works every day. Uh, and it's amazing. You know, his passion He's carries through. Um, are we back up and live there, Liz? We're still on you. We're live, Craig. Yeah, there we go. So video wise, we're good. There we go. I was showing Elizabeth up there. Um, so yeah, so what we want to do is now do one of the highlights of the day, which is the actual Doug Chalmers Award presentation. I am extremely pleased to, to give this award out this year to what I consider a very good friend and someone who is a friend of the OGCA, someone who's been an inspiration to me and to many. Um, you know, this all started a number of years ago. And uh, before I give you the name, it's, it's Rob Ellis, um, Rob Ellis of My Safe Work. Um, you know, Rob uh, started his life differently. Um, Rob all of a sudden had a family tragedy and he decided to make a difference. And it was over 20 years ago that Rob decided to make a life-changing move for him and the rest of his family. And he's been an advocate for safety um, across the board. He's, he was the inspiration behind the League of Champions. Um, and he continues to challenge construction leaders across the province, Canada and the US. Um, Rob has a great following. Um, he's created a new program called Courageous um, that helps educate um, kids in schools about safety. We talk about looking for great leaders. He talks about how they have the right to refuse. He talks about a lot of things. I'm gonna let Rob talk for himself, but I would say to you, there is no better advocate for safety and there was no better model to get the League of Champions kicked off. Um, it's why we did it. Um, and thank you, Rob, for that. Over to you, Rob. Well, uh, thanks very much, uh, Craig. I really, uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity just to get together with family here this morning. Uh, thanks uh, to you, Craig, for your uh, your vision, your inspiration every single day. Uh, Giovanni, I appreciate uh, um, the opportunity to meet you as well uh, in person or uh, <laughs> or by technology, but uh, in person. And uh, Enzo, the work that you do is is always amazing. Uh, um, David, I uh, appreciate uh, the work that you've done uh, as, with us uh, for so many years, and uh, you're always an inspiration. Uh, um, Joelle, uh, um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about you uh, and your organization, because I talk about your organization right across North America. Ron, uh, I, uh, to follow in your footsteps uh, as the uh, Doug Chalmers Award uh, winner is uh, pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, I know that uh, both you and I recognize uh, the wonderful people that have uh, um, have gone before us. Um, and I'm thinking of uh, Craig and Dan and uh, Elizabeth, uh, um, Jim. Uh, they're, they're all great, uh, great, great champions, uh, great Canadians. And uh, so we, we applaud them this morning. And uh, they're the ones that have really uh, um, been pioneers uh, before us. So. Um, I, I picked up the phone actually uh, um, uh, this week and I gave Doug Chalmers a call uh, and I just wanted to thank him for the legacy that he's, uh, he's left us uh, and, and he continues to leave us. Uh, he's uh, 78 years old and still working every single day. Uh, we have a lot in common. We're both on the Freedom 93 plan. Uh, so uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, Doug... Uh, he is a he's 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 a man who uh, is full of wisdom, and uh, I I um, I asked him, Doug. So, what do you want me to um, what do you want me to learn today? What what is what's some of the wisdom that you can give to me? And uh, he said, you know, Rob, uh, it's real simple. When you lead with safety, there's less turnover in your business. And you have a lot more money to spend on training. You have a lot less um, a lot less absentees on your job. Uh, you have a lot more time to spend on productivity. And I, I think that, uh, you know, it's, you just cut it right down. We will talk about systems and so on, but um, it takes some, somebody like a Doug Chalmers to kind of simplify things for us. Uh, and when, when we run our, uh, our companies, we don't want the, uh, the turnover in staff. We, we want to have, uh, we want to build a team that's long lasting. And that feels great every single day and the productivity uh, just grows. And we just, uh, you know, there, there's something good about all of that coming to work and feeling good about working, not for a corporation, but for a team. 
So I, today, I just want to thank you. Uh, um, and I'm really, really pleased. Craig, uh, I, I, I'm so excited when I saw uh, all of the, uh, the video on the League of Champions. Uh, I, I just uh, jumped out of my, uh, my socks here uh, this morning looking at all of the, uh, the videos uh, of everybody kind of cheering everybody on. And I, uh, I know you're at 90 now, but I want you to be at 250. And I know you, you're already calling for 500 to be in the League of Champions. So uh, good for you. I, I, uh, I kind of laughed and smiled a little bit this morning thinking of how um, the League of Champions uh, kind of just started that, that, uh, that one week. I think it was my daughter and I, uh, we, we spoke at two pro, high profile um, uh, events in Toronto. Uh, one that was at the Ontario Science Center and, one, and the other one was at a large convention center. And um, we did, uh, we thought we did reasonably well. I, I thought we did reasonably well. At least a few people came up and said we did reasonably well. So we felt pretty good about it. The compensation package that we, that we both received was, uh, well, I got, a, I got a nine inch submarine sandwich and uh, it was a vegetarian this submarine sandwich, as I recall. And my daughter got a love offering, a kind of a, uh, uh, I think it was a safety missionary love offering uh, of $21.32 with a $1 US bill. And, and that's the kind of compensation package you, you never forget that $1 US bill. We've still, we still laugh about it uh, today. I, I re will recall that lovely uh, submarine sandwich uh, uh, forever. And I, and I came back and I, uh, I um, was talking to David Frame and to Craig and the Clive and they said, so how did you make out with the compensation package? And I, and I explained to him that the, the submarine sandwich was phenomenal, just of the best submarine sandwich you've ever eaten, nine inches of it. And uh, and the twenty two dollars and thirty two cents uh, uh, was was just about enough to get about a quarter of our uh, gas tank filled up. And they looked at me and they said, "You are got to be joking! Absolutely not! Is not going to happen." And from that moment on, they changed their vision. Absolutely changed their vision on the League of Champions. And the League of Champions was created and. Members put uh, put their skin into the business, and uh, they they put uh, money on the line, and and a new uh, league of champions was created, and momentum from that day forward uh, was pretty exciting. Uh, so I I, I congratulate uh, Craig is a visionary guy, and and so is David, and Clyde was too, and they just saw something that uh, that could impact uh, not a, not just the uh, OGCA but all of Ontario. And all of Canada. Uh, so congratulations again. It, it's very, very exciting about the League of Champions. Uh, you know, I, I've been uh, so fortunate to be able to learn from uh, the construction leaders. I consider them a lot of my 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 friends uh, as we go forward. Um, I um, I'm really well. I'm I'm excited to be able to to go uh, across Canada and North America and tell them about the. The leadership of uh, companies that, that that are headed up by people like Joel. Uh, I can tell you the number of times I told um, the story when I went down to speak to uh, Joel's uh, company in uh, Kitchener Waterloo, and the one uh, thing that always is um, always is brought up to my memory is the um, uh, the family aspect of being a member of a family in a great construction company. And I had a, um, a young man stand up and say to me, I've been uh, with Joel for 22 years, but I can tell you one thing, I'm not leaving this family because, not because of the work, but because of the fishing trip that I go on every year. And I said, come on, seriously, really? Fishing trip? And he said, hey, listen, you've never been on this fishing trip. And this, this, this is the kind of thing that builds trust among family members. And I have to tell you that the ladies in the organization went on the most amazing spa every single year. And they all raved about it and all talked about it. And those are the kinds of issues that we are, are um, well, we're, we're, we're looking for. We're, those are the kind of factors that, that really tie in 
um, a team rather than an organization. Those people were willing to stay on and love the company because they love the people that they were working with. And I don't think that that's, uh, that's we don't take that slightly. We take that uh, with real importance. And I think that the OGCA has real strong family members. They have strong family groups. Uh, they also get the fact that um, safe, the safety culture is directly linked to the success of their productivity, and it, which is in turn directly related or directly linked to profitability. So safety and productivity and profitability are all linked together in one sentence. And that is, a, that is the thing that really makes, makes them really, really different. Uh, and I, I, I applaud them. I, I absolutely love them. I, I talk about them all the time, right across, uh, right across Ontario and Canada. They're great examples for all, all leaders. But this is a competitive world that we live in uh, today. And I know that um, uh, all of the industry leaders, including OGCA, want to get engaged with the next generation of leaders. They need those leaders uh, to, to jump on board with them. And that includes all skilled trades and apprentices. It includes engineers, it includes computer scientists, it includes business grads. And, and I am I'm really happy that um, uh, OGCA members have uh, continued uh, right along with us. And uh, in our last event in Toronto, we had, uh, uh, well, that was a couple of weeks ago, we had um, about 400 uh, uh, students from Ontario and Canada and India and Africa and uh, all over the world jump on with 50 uh, business leaders. And, um, and we just had an amazing engagement. But that momentum has really, really carried forward. We have absolutely, uh, over this last year, um, been incredibly busy. Our next four events will be at, in uh, locations in Stony Creek with Mohawk College, uh, in London, Ontario with the University of um, uh, Western Ontario, and with the uh, College of, um, of Indigenous um, Students, uh, which uh, includes um, um, many locations from Windsor, Sarnia, Chatham, London. And, uh, we're, we're really excited because these events have turned into regional events. And um, I, I have to tell you that uh, the students, there's a huge, huge thirst for knowledge. We're, we're talking to um, engineers that want to know about health and safety. We're talking to apprentices and tradespeople that want to know more about leadership skills. We're talking to, uh, we're talking to dentists and, and doctors that want to know about health and safety and want to know about it today. Uh, and I, uh, I'm really abs absolutely thrilled that uh, um, all the Ontario colleges and every single one of these school boards in Ontario are on board with us now. And they want that knowledge. They want to know who are the great leaders in our nation. And working with OGCA, uh, is a just a great example of who great leaders are. They're passionate, they're competitive, and they're feisty. I think uh, I think I can actually use that word uh, uh, feisty because they absolutely are. But this is a construction industry. This is a business that that uh, um, will attract people with that passion and with that desire to get better. And I think that the next generation of leaders can look to OGCA and and find that there will be a great match. But today, this is a day of celebration. And I am absolutely thrilled to be able to be a part of the, uh, the family of OGCA and, and receive the Doug Chalmers Award. I'm absolutely thrilled to, to uh, be part of your, your, your great family. It's a great Canadian institution, uh, OGCA is. And I, and I just thank you all as members great champions, league of champions. I know that you're continuing to make a difference in our nation and you'll impact the next generation of leaders coming through. They want to be with you. So let's open up the doors and let's get acquainted. Let's get them engaged right away. 
If I can be of any help to you in 2021, please give us a call. I'm here for you. Thank you so much for letting me be part of this today. Rob, congratulations, one and all. Um, right now, you'd hear thunderous applause if we were actually, you know, uh, face to face, but unfortunately, you get uh, a virtual golf clap. <laughs> um, but I do know now that, you know, when we do meet face to face, you're actually a cheap date. So just a nine inch vegetarian sub is all it's going to take to make you happy. I'm, I can buy that. I'm good. I think I have the budget for it. So I look forward to the time that we can actually get together and break bread or in your case, a sub and, uh, and chat and, and move it forward. But thank you for your for your um, acceptance of the award. Thank you for what you do in the industry. It's, uh, it's important. It's important to spread the word and to um, impart knowledge onto the next generation, as you stated. It's, it's wonderful. Um, and, and so with that, uh, we're in the closing remarks. I, I want to uh, turn my attention to recognize the individuals and companies that have made uh, this uh, well, day and, and this entire series uh, a success. Uh, I want to start off with the lead sponsor, Forest Consulting. So be your um, dedication uh, to health and safety is steadfast. It's unwavering and it's amazing. And we thank you for being the lead sponsor because as always, you step up whenever you're challenged and, and you always produce. So for all that you do and all that Forest does, thank you. In regards to the panel uh, sponsors, we've got Northbridge Insurance and Skills Pass. Again, thank you for your, uh, your continued uh, support of the industry and uh, uh, stay tuned. Skill Pass is going through um, a bit of an update. So uh, we'll, we'll have more uh, for you in the coming uh, days and weeks ahead. Uh, I, re I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our event sponsor, IHSA. Uh, Enzo and I have known each other for quite some time. Um, and Enzo has always been um, voracious in his appetite when it comes down to health and safety and ensuring that people get home safe. Uh, so for that, Enzo, you know, you and Paul are, are integral into our, uh, our mix here. And, and thank you uh, again. And, and last but not least, our, our, uh, there will be a gift bag sent out. So the gift band sponsor is Intact Insurance. We thank them for their contribution as well. And with that, I'd like to hand this over to Enzo for some closing remarks. Great. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, appreciate the, the kind words as well. And uh, you know what, this, this is all about a partnership and collaboration. And without OGCA and, and your leadership and Dave's leadership and your entire staff, you know, we can't get these things going and we can't elevate uh, or move the chains, as we say, right, um, in health and safety. So thanks for all your efforts there. I want to circle back to Rob. And again, Rob, thank you for your and congratulations for, for getting the, uh, the, the Leadership Award, Doug Chalmers Award. You're far too humble. Um, you've been a huge catalyst, massive catalyst for the industry, for students, um, for the League of Champions as well. And I want to thank you for that because uh, those efforts will carry on for many, many years forward. And that's, that's a critical piece of, of elevating and moving Ontario forward. So thanks for that, Rob. Um, your efforts, again, are, are very much appreciated. And to everyone for participating, thanks again for coming today, but this isn't the end of it, right? This is a series, as Giovanni said, um, this year we are able to do it over three days, three Fridays in a row. So next Friday, March 12th, please join as well. And March 19th, we've got some great panels. Uh, next week is leadership during a crisis and we've all been living it, but there's some key elements there and the panelists, uh, we have a great panel and we really uh, appreciate your attendance there next week. You'll get a lot out of it. The week after is about building an effective strategy to manage worker safety. And that's again on Friday, the 19th of March. And another great panel there that will provide great insights uh, into, um, uh, into the topic of, of those strategies that we can move forward with, again, to elevate Ontario. Um, so on that note, uh, we've come to an end for this session. And I want to, again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate your participation. Uh, over the, over 100 and, and change there, what we saw. And the next ones will be just as, as busy. So, so again, stay well, keep safe. And thanks to all the people, uh, the panelists today, the Minister McNaughton, Ron Kaluski, uh, Craig, of course. So we thanks for your leadership here as well. And my colleague who opened it, David, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next week. So appreciate it. Take care, everybody.